Well, Eric, first off, the objective tonight was to secure your place in the Champions League for next season. How satisfied are you to have done that? Yeah, of course, that is um, uh, so we finalised the season and that was our objective. We achieved it and that's huge, uh, especially in this league. Uh, a really emotional year, a, a very special season and um, and the team deserved and, and the, our people deserve to end it in a, in a good way. So I'm really happy. Evaluating a successful football season can vary depending on the context and the specific goals of the club. However, several common factors are often used to assess the success of a football season. Winning a trophy is generally considered a significant measure of success in football. The league title or cup trophy is often regarded as the ultimate prize in domestic competitions as it signifies that a team has been the best over the course of a full season. Winning the league demonstrates consistency, superior performance and the ability to outperform other teams in a sustained manner. Eric Ten Hag side put to pass Newcastle United at Wembley to win the 2023 Eiffel Cup and ended a six-year trophy drought. It was their first piece of silverware since they beat Ajax in the 2017 Europa League final under Jose Mourinho. Arsenal, on the other hand, won no silverware in 2023. The last taste of silverware that Arsenal has is from way back in 2020, when two goals from the skipper Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang cancelled out Christian Pulisic's goal to win 2-1 in an empty stadium. Arsenal also won the Community Shield on the 29th of August 2020. But that's not a real trophy, right? Manchester United are therefore outright winners when basing it on the additions made to the trophy cabinet by the end of the season. Our players, I think they play a brilliant season. I want to thank you and also uh, they get supported by the staff. I want also thank you to the staff. They did also a magnificent good job. For some other teams, Trophies alone don't define a successful season. Is it right to only define a club's success by the trophies won during the campaign? All 90 to football league teams participate in the EFL Cup. 124 teams participate in the FA Cup and 20 in the Premier League. We can only have one winner in each of these local competitions. But can't we have several successful teams in a single competition based on a team's objectives? or ambitions for the season? That brings us to the second metric. Success can also be defined by achieving specific objectives set by the team. These objectives could include reaching a certain stage in a tournament, qualifying for European competitions, or avoiding relegation depending on the team's circumstances. Well, the most common ones are the total amount of investment in the squad notable player additions and departures, recent trajectory and management and administrative stability. Manchester United invested a total of 238 million euros in player purchases and was able to recoup 22 million euros in player sale. Arsenal spent 192 million euros in player purchases and recouped 26 million euros from sales. Notable squad additions for Manchester United were Antony and Lissandro Martinez from Ajax, Casemiro from Real Madrid, Eriksen from Brentford and Sabitzer brought in the experience from Bayern Munich. Weghorst came in in January from Burnley, having played a key role in that World Cup quarterfinals match against Argentina, Pogba. Lingard and Cristiano Ronaldo in January were notable exits. The absence of the 21-year-old Mason Greenwood was also profound. Arsenal brought in Jesus and Zinchenko from Manchester City and Saliba was welcomed back after a successful loan spell in France. January additions were Trissard and Jorginho from Premier League sides and Kiwier from Spezia in Italy, Hector Bellerin, Nuno Tavares, Nicolas Pepe and Bernard Lino were not really having plenty of playing time despite their exits. A notable exit was Alexander Lacazette, who was the club captain by then after Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang facing the axe earlier on. Arsenal certainly had better managerial 
and administrative stability prior to the start of the 2022-2023 season, and was on an upward trajectory. Manchester United's fan base had a sense of optimism with Eric Ten Hag. He had previously led the young Ajax team to the 2019-2020 Champions League semifinals. His reign at Ajax saw him win three Eredivisie titles across three complete seasons in charge, whilst it also saw him claim the Dutch Cup. On two occasions in 2018, 19 and 2020, 21 and the Dutch Super Cup in 2019, the 20. Had Arsenal really gone the distance to have similar ambitions? In terms of cup runs and league success as Manchester United? Probably not. One thing is certain. If Arsenal were presented with the opportunity to finish second in the Premier League, before the season started, they would have grabbed the opportunity with both arms. Improvement from previous seasons is another metric that can be used in the evaluation of a season's success if a team shows progress. An improvement compared to previous seasons, it can be seen as a successful season. This could be reflected in a higher league position. More points earned or better overall performance. Manchester United finished the league third in the 2019-2020 season with 66 points. Second in the 2020-2021 season with 74 points, then slumped to six in the 2021-2020 season with 58 points and a goal difference of zero. This shows an inconsistent team that had also not had a good run in the cup competitions during these three preceding seasons. This highly contrasts with Arsenal, who finished the League 8th in the 2019-2020 season with 56 points. Eighth again in the 2020-2021 season with 61 points, then scaled higher to finish 5th in the 2021-2022 season with 69 points missing the Champions League spot to their North London rivals Tottenham. How did Arsenal perform in the 2021-2022 league season? In the Premier League, they won 22 games, drew 3 and lost 13 out of the 38 matches averaging 1.82 points per game. They scored 61 goals that translates to 1.61 per game and conceded 48 goals that is 1.26 per game. The Gunners sat on the top of the table for 248 days before suffering a slump in the run into the season and finally finishing second, as Manchester City claimed their fifth league title in six years. In the Cups, Arsenal had lost in the third round to Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup and lost in the semi-finals to Liverpool in the EFL Cup in the 2021-2020 season. The team had no European football that season due to finishing eighth the previous season. So how did they perform in the cup competitions? In the just concluded 2022-2023 season, they suffered Europa League elimination in the round of 16 to Sporting CP from Portugal. Eliminated from the FC Cup in the hands of Manchester City and lost in the third round to Brighton and Hove Albion. Fight in the competition and, and go for it and um, and today we tried we tried for 120 minutes and the penalties and um, it wasn't enough. On the other hand, Manchester United managed 23 wins, 6 draws and suffered 9 losses in the just concluded season. The 75 points 1.97 per game they amassed was 17 more than their previous season. They finished the season third just behind Arsenal and local rivals Manchester City. They scored 58 goals 1.53 per game and conceded 43 goals 1.13 per game. The goal difference of 15 was a welcomed improvement from the zero goal difference they had the previous season. In the Cups, Manchester United were knocked out of the Europa League in the quarterfinals by Sevilla. They reached a cup finals losing to Manchester City on 3rd June in the FA Cup Final at Wembley after they had beaten Newcastle to 2-0 to win the EPL Cup on the 26th of February at the same venue. Manchester United were definitely miles ahead in their cup runs compared to Arsenal. Clubs focusing on youth development or player progression 
A successful season may be determined by the growth and development of individual players. This could include young players. Breaking into the first team or established players reaching new heights in their performance. Both Eric Ten Hag and Arteta have projects, which the club's management have shown willingness to support. This is highlighted by the fact that they both have philosophies and irreducible minimums that saw them leave out of their squads. Club captain Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Cristiano Ronaldo and eventually ship them out. These were very bold moves considering the statute of the two. The two clubs also have a crop of young players who have made tremendous growth this season. Manchester United's Argentinian prospect. Garnacho, aged 18, is a standout name with his impressive cameos. He contributed three goals and two assists in 569 minutes. Marcus Rashford, aged 24, performances after the World Cup was something to cherish. He ended the league with 17 league goals and six Europa League goals. Arsenal had the youngest squad age in the Premier League. Saka, Martinelli, and Odegaard had a combined total of 44 goals and 23 assists. This was the best goal contribution of any three forwards across Europe's top leagues. With a bit more depth, Arsenal fans will certainly feel they can again make a robust challenge to the title and have a stellar season. Arsenal and Manchester United all have had to overcome adversity throughout the season in varying proportions. Manchester United had to cope without key players after they suffered long-term injuries, with key among them being Rafael Varane and Anthony Marshall. Arsenal, on the other hand, had to endure spells without Gabriel Jesus and their key defender William Saliba. Arsenal's lowest point of the season was going for league matches without a win. And that is where they ultimately lost the title. Their L best wins came when they won 5-0 against Nottingham Forest. On the 30th of October 2022 and Wolves on the final day of the league. Manchester United's extreme lows was when they suffered a 4-0 loss. To Brentford early in the season. A 3-0 loss to eventual Europa League winners in the semi-final stage in April and an embarrassing 7-0 defeat at Anfield. Their best moments were the 2-0 Cup final win at Wembley against Newcastle, the 2-1 win against Barcelona to knock them out of the Europa League and the 2-1 win against fellow City rivals Manchester City. Arsenal's crumble at the end of the season did leave many of their supporters with heavy hearts and overshadowed the fact that they did push the best team in Europe to the extreme end in the pursuit of the title. It is important to note that different stakeholders, such as fans, players, coaches, and club owners may have different criteria for evaluating success. Ultimately, the assessment of a successful football season is subjective and can vary based on the goals and expectations of those involved. It is pleasing to see both teams back to the Champions League together for a long time. The two teams are also on an upward trajectory and the Arsenal-Manchester United rivalry is back. And is a showdown football lovers should look forward to. Let the debates and friendly banters continue.